Boys and girls, welcome to the 13 Nights of Halloween. Hey, that gets my goat marathon with Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to That Gets My Goat. Yes, this is another episode of the 13 Nights of Halloween. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. Hope you are enjoying it so far. Yes, I hope so. I am enjoying it. I got a smile. On my, I had enough of a smile on my face that I've been laughing to where like my cheeks are slightly sore. You know what I mean? That oh, last, good. Wow. That last episode was enjoyable. Hopefully the people listened to it and also found it to be enjoyable because that's not necessarily always translates. You hear about movies where a bunch of buddies get together and just shoot the, you know what? They shoot the film, actually. <laughs> But they, they're just there to have fun. It's like an excuse, you know, to spend a month with their, their friends and, and that. And the movie comes out really badly. You know, it's just not a good movie. But the cast and crew had a great time making it. Or you see one of those movies where it's not funny at all, but it has outtakes that are funny. Where people <laughs> crack up or they, you know, oh, I got the line wrong. Well, you kind of thing. I guess this could be that. Yeah, we were having could fun, be. and the people at home say, "I, yeah. I don't understand what they're saying." Yeah, it's like if if they've enjoyed it half as much as we enjoyed making it, you kind of a thing where we enjoyed it twice as much because of it. What is it you always say after that? Ha 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 ha. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's basically how it goes. Just remember, if you've enjoyed watching it half as much as we enjoyed making it, then we enjoyed it twice as much as you. Ha ha ha. And then I think uh, the sixteen-ton weight falls on his head. <laughs> All right, so let's see if we can take it down a notch. Bring it down. We're going to bring the room down here, everybody. Uh, something I really wanted to talk about last week when we stayed up way, way, way too late and we had to quit. Not like not, tonight. Not f- much different from today. Is I, I wanted to do an episode about ghosts. Ghosts? And I know we've talked about ghosts because we've done ghost stories before. We did uh, the Sadie Worth one, right? Mm-hmm. And we've done... That we we did the one where there's like the really devout guy who's lived a happy, selfless life, and on New Year's Eve he's visited by three evil spirits that show him like how his life would be different if he had been bad, and he's just like, oh well, f this man, but there's still time, <laughs> and he like kicks a dog and he embezzles from his company the next day, and yeah, yeah, the spirits did it all in one night. It's actually pretty yeah, that great. was nice because so. he was able to embezzle right away. Anyhow, they made sure that he didn't miss Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> the, the subject of ghosts has come up before i guess is what i'm saying but i don't think we did ghosts last year and if we did oof, i don't care because unlike some of the other topics the the one where we talked about bugs i have had experiences that add to the ghost conversation in the past year and so i i really just i, I wanted to talk about it i i at the, at the time we must have been not getting together. We must have been with different schedules or something like that. Because I sure would have liked to have talked about what I did last Halloween on a That Gets My Goat. But here we are tonight. And, and I think we can talk about it. Well, maybe it was because Halloween was over. And so you didn't feel, feel that it fit, fit the mood. That's probably what it was. I would have been super, We both would have been super burnt out after doing a marathon of shows last Halloween. We wouldn't have wanted to do a, a That Gets My Goat for a while. I, I feel like I've been talking a long time. Can you hear it in my voice? The, uh, the gravelly. The, the, the Jimmy the Stewart filibuster. Voice. Yeah, there you go. I, I do not like green eggs and ham. Do not like them, Sam. I am. All right. Well, the, I will not serve any at our thanks for donating to the uh, podcast luncheon. Okay. Pancake uh, breakfast. Yes. <laughs> That's a callback, folks, to uh, the May long weekend parade. <laughs> Canada just seems like a strange place because of you make it sound that way. <laughs> it, they're basically us, except for when you talk. <laughs> it's like, really? Wait, wait, they do what? <laughs> and each town must offer up one child in sacrifice. I was like, oh, well, that sounds good. Wait, what? <laughs> for Heritage Day? And it's like, yeah, that's the only way they can continue the heritage of each small town. Or wait, did we cut that part out? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, we did cut that bit. 
<laughs> you, you you felt it was too much of a rip off of the lottery, so it turns out that it was it was a popular book, and everybody said, "Let's do that. Let's try it out." <laughs> and so yeah, they just started doing a lottery every year, and pretty much gone from there. Yeah, that whole uh, trunk or treat observant started out as the lottery. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> we're really trying with I callbacks here. I <laughs> want to talk about ghosts, uh, mostly because I am scared to death of ghosts. That's interesting because death produces ghosts. I, I guess that's fair to say. It does. Yeah, yeah it's kind of an apt expression. So before I rattle on and on and on, g- give me your thoughts about ghosts, please. Well, it's interesting because I've heard you tell stories uh, about various uh, experiences that you, folks that you know have had with ghosts. I guess you have various uncles and stuff that are really believe firmly in ghosts or really into ghosts, love to hang out with them, go out with them on weekends, that kind of stuff. And uh, I don't have any experiences like that. I don't have anybody in my family that is a firm believer or that uh, is into that kind of thing. As far as I know, anyways, I do have a nephew who got married on Halloween on purpose, not just a scheduling snafu or anything. (laughs) So he must be into it in some way, but I don't know that he's into ghosts or or any of that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, my experience with ghosts is movies, Ghostbusters, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what lies beneath that kind of thing is my experience with ghosts. So I've never really, I mean, I can scare myself into thinking that there's a ghost sometimes. But in general, I guess I'm a non-believer. I'm a scoffer. I don't usually give it much uh, credence. You know, my, we have a friend, the person that I, I used to go and do CrossFit with. She recently moved and... My wife is pretty good friends with her, and she was talking with her, and uh, they said that they were glad that they could move because one of their kids was having a real hard time with a ghost in their house. It just kept bothering him, and he wasn't able to get any sleep, is what this woman said. And my wife is just like, (laughs) what the frick is wrong with you? Wait, she said this to her face? No, but that's what she was thinking in her head the whole time, and she's just like, you know, nodding and trying to be civil, but like... What the hell? I thought I knew you. When, when did you turn into a freak? You know, is what she's thinking as she's telling this story. And so that's more the kind of people that I know is the ones that are going <laughs> rather than the ones that are like, no, seriously, yeah, it's real. You know, whereas I think you come from an, a completely different spectrum of people where you're probably a lot more that are like, yeah, that's real, as opposed to. Uh, you know, the folks that I know. So, yeah, I mean, that's my experience with ghosts, I guess. I mean, I've seen plenty of movies and read books and been scared by them. But, you know, I don't have an experience that I can point to or anything like that. Okay, so 100% non-believer then? I don't know if I could say 100%, but close. Okay. There might be a niche, a, a, a little crack in the armor that you could pry open. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's hard to... Not that you need to do that now. Just, you know, carry on. Oh, no, no. I'm not trying to to, <laughs> to, to convert you to some kind of belief in You're ghosts. You're not a Mormon cricket trying to convert me to believe in ghosts? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I, I have a family that are believers in things, in the occult, in the supernatural, in the paranormal. And so... Maybe just from when I was a young child, it was acceptable to believe in that sort of stuff because, you know, my aunts and uncles already did. I, I, I don't know. I, I know I to- told of my dad saying that I shouldn't be afraid of my grandmother snoring because it would scare away the ghosts. And me being young enough to take that literally to think that actually served a purpose. Her snoring actually kept ghosts away and that, you know, if she didn't do that, they would come. That is a vivid memory of, you know, just how your mind works as a child kind of thing. But these are formative things, things that you hear as a young person almost never completely go away. Yeah, I'll have to remember that, not to mess around with my kids like that. I do have a daughter that you you say something like that. She'll be like, what? Ghosts? So I wonder how how much I've screwed her up. 
the idea of ghosts really scares me. And it's not that they are the souls of the dead so much. Because I, I know we talked about this in a, a regular episode of the Dune Steef. If you knew that there was a ghost and it was your grandmother or was Abraham Lincoln or whatever it might be, there would be some kind of silver lining to that. There is an afterlife. There is life beyond this. There is another place that, you know, those who are gone are not truly gone. You know, that kind of thing. Wow. And that to me is not scary. And on top of that, if it was your grandma, for example, your grandma's gone. But hey, maybe there's some way that you can see your grandma kind of a thing. You know, it would be like a seeing an angel versus seeing a, a, a ghost kind of a thing. You know what I mean? It would be a positive thing, I guess. Sure, exactly. And and my uncle, the one that I used to live with, he would talk about that. And he says, yeah, I talked to my mom last night. He believed that she came to him in dreams. Now, they, they were dreams. It's not the same thing. But in his dream, and it's so weird because he would say it. He, he would tell me three or four times until I got to the point where I didn't want to hear him anymore. That the dreams would always be the same. That he would hear a sound upstairs where he would hear her voice and he would come upstairs and she'd be in the kitchen and she'd either be cooking or she'd be sitting at the table, but she would been waiting for him. So she'd like made him pancakes or, you know, tamales or something like that. And then she would want to talk to him about something that was going to happen. You know, whether she wanted to prepare him or whether she wanted to say, oh, you know, something good is, is coming kind of thing. And he would tell us this. And at first I was just like, wow, that is riveting. But then I found out that I, I guess this is something – this is a recurring dream for him. This is something that happens once a month that he has a dream that his mother is is waiting for him. and that. So it, it started to become either tedious or it started to become predictable or it started to become like, ah, you had this dream. Let's, 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 boy, how did I get on that? Oh, OK. But that idea of a ghost is not frightening to me. I, I mean it's a little bit frightening because – you know, wow, I know she's dead, but here she is kind of thing. What is frightening to me is the the being either with malevolent purposes or unknowable design, something that may be a person that has moved on, but it may be something else, something that's there and then is not there, something that wants to cause you harm or mischief or upset you, or you don't know what it wants. That sort of thing is really frightening to me. The the alienness of the ghost. I saw that movie the, uh, called Mama, and I just couldn't wait to talk to you about it because I know you. You don't watch horror movies. You would never in a thousand years see Mama. And I was telling you about how terrifying that movie was. I have listened to uh, the Ozzy Osbourne song Mama, I'm Coming Home, though. Have you listened to the Glenn Danzig Mama song? No. Oh, well, you're missing out. I think you would like that song. Although it's, it's ominous. It's kind of creepy Halloween kind of music. Put it on your Halloween playlist. All right. Do you have a Halloween playlist? No. Make one, please. Okay. I'll get started right now. You you keep talking. and Mama was a, a, a horror film that came out, I think, oh. in 2012. It might have been 13. It might have been this year about these two little children who are lost in the woods, essentially. I'm, I'm summing up. Hansel uh, and Gretel? And raised by a ghost. And then they are discovered by authorities or whatever and taken back to civilization and mama comes with them she doesn't mama, want she's to be coming left home mama. and please no more <laughs> and anyway it was so scary that i think i cried through a third of it i just had my hand over my mouth to keep from screaming and the tears would just roll down i was so scared until the point where the narrative of the movie tells you what mama wants what's wrong with mama why is she still roaming the earth? You know, it's one of those ghosts that has uh-huh. a an unfulfilled has a back purpose story. kind of thing. Or it has an unfinished business kind of thing. Uh-huh. The second I knew her motivations, that I knew what she wanted, even though she's ghastly and borderline poor CG, <laughs> she stopped being scary. And that was totally surprising to me. I mean, I know we talked about it with the Cylons or we talked about it with the visitors from V or we've talked about it with whatever unknowable force that when you know them, they're no longer scary. But 
it was in a the space of a 90 minute movie it happened and she she was still terrifying to look at or whatever i mean the, the way that they designed her and the way she moved was unnatural and it upset you and all that but once i knew it was just like oh okay well she's not alien anymore she's not unknowable she's just a ghost she's a mom she's you know she she was wronged and all that stuff and that was such a revelation to me i mean i knew it already because we've talked about it but it still was just like okay what can we learn from this as a storyteller this is a roundabout way of, of 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 me saying i don't know if i believe in ghosts but i am not closed off to the idea that they're that they exist i've never seen a ghost Although I've had unexplainable experiences where I was like, well, maybe that was a ghost, but I don't know kind of thing. But my friend Rhett, he's a big believer in, in this kind of stuff. And for years he's said, you know, uh, for Halloween, there's this town out in the middle of freaking nowhere. It's by where Big Anklevich lives. It's that remote. What? I mean, yeah, we're talking kid on a banjo remote. And Whoa, barefoot kid on a banjo. I yes, bet. barefoot bucked tooth Louisiana kid <laughs> with a banjo looking at Ned Beatty's backside. And he said that there's this town and it's out there and it's supposed to be haunted. And every year around Halloween time, they do a ghost tour. And I was like, oh, that sounds neat. And the year after year after year, he would tell me this thing. And he's like, we should go sometime. And I would say, oh, yeah, sure, we should go. But we never did. But last year, I said, you know, uh, I can't get over the fact that you always say we should do this, but we never, ever do. And he says, oh, I didn't know you really wanted to go because my wife is all freaked out by that kind of stuff. And But you really would want to go. And so I said, yes. And so it was like the week of Halloween. And we went. And it used to be like an army training center, outpost kind of thing okay. that they built in the 1800s <clears throat> right before – the Civil War broke out and they built this up and it had a bunch of deaths in the army. Barracks? Camp? Fort? Yeah. Fort. There you go. It was in the fort, in the military fort. And they had deaths. The, the, the guy, the, there was a tour guide. He was worked for the government, the parks and recreation yeah. thing. And So he's out of work right now? I'm sure he is. There's <laughs> probably not any ghost tour this year. The, the ghosts are on camp. strike. He told the history of the camp and he told about three or four deaths that had occurred in this period. And then the civil war broke out and they disbanded the entire fort and took off to go fight the civil war. And it just the, left it there and they never came back. You know, people moved in and stuff and used the facilities and, and there's still a town there. But later, a hundred years later or 75 or something like that, the government bought the buildings and tried to keep them the way that they had been. So we could see what life had been like 150 years ago kind of thing. But he said that over the years, there have been all sorts of sightings and experiences and people that claims that they had seen this and and hearing things and, and, and all that stuff. And uh, in like the 1920s and 30s, they, they, they built a bed and breakfast out of this barracks place. And people heard all these experiences. And, and one guy, he woke up in the middle of the night and there was somebody standing at the foot of his bed reaching for him. And he actually pulled out his pistol and fired at this person. And they left the hole in the wall where this guy did that. I mean, you could go there and look at the hole. And, 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 and there was a little plaque that said how the hole got there kind of thing. Hmm. Anyway, he said, that, you know, we started doing ghost tours about five years ago, 10 years ago kind of thing. Where people could come here and on one night of the year. So we're going back to that one night of the year. Yeah, kind of that's thing. one special night. People could come here and they could wander around on their own and do whatever they want. <laughs> My mind instantly went another direction. People could do what they want. <laughs> but, you know, they could go ghost hunting, basically, is what it is. And he said, you know, uh, people can come with their video cameras. They can come with their still cameras. They can come with tape recorders. They can come with ectograms what are those things that they have there that is a fudgeon pke meters there's a fudgeon app for <laughs> your iphone for that kind of stuff for infrared and for whatever egon spangler studies and so he talked about this and he said you know i personally have never seen a ghost so you know don't ask but there have been people on the tours that said that they have 
And we have this slideshow. And he they, they proceeded to show a bunch of slides, let's say 20, of photographs that people had taken on the ghost tour. And most of the photographs had like a little squiggle or they had like dots on them or, you know, they had like a double exposure or whatever. But there were definitely a couple that had faces in them. Somebody had taken a picture and there's a wall and there's nothing there and a face of somebody, you know, is half see-through or whatever kind of thing. And the best one was a series of pictures of somebody sitting on the steps. And he said, you know, I was, I gave that tour and a, a guy said, I can see somebody sitting on the steps through my camera. And he took like four pictures and two of them, there's a guy and they showed that. And I was just like, a part of me was just like, oh, come on. You cannot like your your wife. Yeah, right. And like that is a ghost. But another part of me was just like, no, he just said he took four pictures and two of them had this guy in them or all kind of thing. I started getting all excited. And at the same time, I was a little scared. And that and he says, OK, so this is the end of the the tour. I'm going to go back to the gift shop place, whatever you call that. They're, they're, they've got a big museum room that has artifacts from the time period and then the visitor center. Ton, tons of books from the period and just stuff that you can buy. And he's like, but I'll, I'm going to go there and I'm going to be there for the next 90 minutes or hour or whatever it is. You can come talk to me and I will answer questions for you. But the rest of the time is yours. And you can wander around. You can do what you can. You can take pictures. Um, he talked about these things called orbs, which are circles of light that appear in photographs. And he says that that's the primary encounter that people have or photographic evidence of ghosts are these orbs. People find them all the time. They take pictures and you can't see them with your eyes. But when you take a photograph, there they are on your camera. And he showed a bunch of pictures of people had taken a picture of their family or whatever. And there's hundreds of circles all around these people. And I was just like, wow, that's so obviously water vapor, <clears throat> you know, that kind of thing. It's dust. But at the dust same time, the catching the flash, who knows? <laughs> right. So we wandered around and the guy had shown us a map, by the way, of what the town had looked like when it was a fort. And, you know, here are the th- five places you guys can go and you can go on foot or you can drive around or whatever you want and one of them was the cemetery the military cemetery and i was like that is where we're going and so we (laughs) got in the car and we drove over there together and uh, we were the only ones there and we wandered through the cemetery and no exaggeration i probably took 200 photos just flash waiting for it to start up at flash you know that often i just of everything here's a tree here's a headstone here's a and they said that in the time between the abandonment of the fort and the resettlement of the town all of the original headstones had been broken up or taken for firewood or whatever so nobody knew which bodies were born, were buried where who actually whose remains were there you know they just left the bodies there but they put up you know generic stones once you know in the 50s or whatever the the state took it over. And so I was like, well, if any place is going to have ghosts, it's a place where the headstones have been removed. I mean, you know, Spielberg taught us that. But nothing. Uh, there were there was no nothing scary. There was no rustling. There were no shadows. There were no shapes. And eventually, after my friend and I wandered around for 20 minutes, half hour, other people came to the cemetery that were already on their tour. And so we went through and we went through the bed and breakfast and we uh, went through... Um, the schoolhouse was the coolest place. There was a, an old schoolhouse that had been there for a hundred something years and it was getting cold. And so people started to go home. And by the time we went back to the school, oh, we also went to the gift shop and I asked the guy all sorts of questions about, you know, what people had seen. And I was like, you know, okay, just between me and you, do you believe that was a ghost on the stairs? And he's like, well, no, but you showed the photographs. And he's like, yeah, I mean, it looks like a person, but you know how film works and you know that that you we've all seen double exposures and that it doesn't mean that that's the photo of a dead person kind of thing and i was like oh well you should have kept up that i don't know kind of thing (laughs) instead of just coming right out although that's what i did i asked him if he believed it between you and me 
so everybody had gone home except for Rhett and me and the people that were talking in the gift shop in the visitor center. And so I said, let's go back to the school because the stairs to the school is where this person had been photographed. And that they said that that was the place where there had been the most sightings, the most encounters, the most people that had that claimed to have had experiences. And, and I don't know if I'm doing the story justice. I hope I'm explaining it in enough detail, but not so much detail that you're like, get on with the friggin' story. Because I wanted to be scared. I wanted to see something. But at the same time, I wasn't so sure I wanted to see something. <laughs> but we wandered around, and it was a one-room schoolhouse that had privies attached to it. And then they'd built, they'd incorporated them into the, the school, and then later they'd put in actual flushing toilets and all that stuff, you know. So it looked like the schoolhouse had a hundred years ago, except for with modern facilities and electric lights and all that. But uh, Red decided to go outside and like, you know, take pictures outside and see, you know, the stairs where that person had been. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to stay in here by myself. And I was alone in this schoolhouse and I went over to the light switch and I turned it off. And then I stood by myself alone. And I was like, okay, if anything's going to happen, if I'm going to sense anything, if I'm going to hear anything, now is the time it's going to happen. So I just stood there in the dark, listening, you know, imagining what would be the worst thing that you could hear right now. Or, you know, I, I, I started to imagine something touching you on the back of the shoulder. Some, you know, somebody is standing behind you, but you know you're alone in this room. And I started to psych myself out, freak myself out a little bit. It was just like, what would I do if that actually happened? It's like, I would never get over it. I would spend the rest of my life in some kind of home. <laughs> and then, yeah, the worst thing was, I was just like, okay, I can't take it anymore. I'm going to turn on the light. And I thought, you turn on the light and there's a woman standing right in front of you. And she's so obviously dead. And, you know, she's just like, she was murdered in this schoolhouse 80 years ago or whatever and just waiting for some idiot to come turn off the lights and <laughs> and oh I was just like oh but but there was nothing nothing no woman was standing there have you ever seen that YouTube video of I think it's a Brazilian TV show <laughs> Where they rigged up an elevator so this little girl can climb out and they like make the power go out on the elevator and then when it comes back on, there's a girl standing in there and the people flip out. It's really, really entertaining. But at the same time, I feel so bad for these people. <laughs> and we've talked about it. That would not fly here in America. Because people would kick the crap out of that kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would be my first instinct is push it away, yeah. punch it, throw it. You know, and I'm not even Italian, you know. You wouldn't be but the coward. But the Hispanic people or whatever Brazilians are, the first thing is just, you know, that kind of stuff. The, just the, their superstitious nature. Or, oh, and it sounds racist. I don't mean it to be that way. But, but the whole – Well, you know – I mean, you come from that stock, so I don't know that you could say it's racist. That's but it is. Family. It is that you know. They, they instantly they begin to to rezar, you know, to recite the the you know the the, the Lord's prayer or the or the the Hail Mary, full of grace kind of thing. There's a, a you know they they draw inward away from these dark forces. Whereas I think our first instinct is to strike out against it. You know, get away, get away. You know, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. There. There. there that there would be nothing left of this poor little girl, yeah, and, and you the whole time. Do it with a girl. You'd have to do it with a grown up, just so that people would think. But it, it would be upsetting to if they got a a, a, a grown man, a dwarf, to dress <laughs> as a little child. <laughs> that that makes me think. Of, that's why I ask. Is because that totally makes me think of that. That your turn on the light, and then suddenly now she's in the room. Kind of idea. That's exactly what they did to these pe poor people. And yeah, to see uh, there there are a couple. That are just, they try to shrug it off, but they're obviously upset by what they see. They're just like, oh, oh man, oh geez, I, am I seeing this? I got to look away kind of thing. But yeah, the, there was just like a big heavy set, poor Catholic woman who just, oh, ay Dios, no, you know, kind of thing. She was so afraid of the, you know, this brush with the supernatural of, you know, of, of, the, of the angel of death come to visit her or whatever it is. I just, oh, I felt so bad for her. 
Yeah, I felt bad for these people because I'm pretty sure the way they got them there and onto the elevator was telling them that they were coming in for a job interview. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yes, the, just get on the elevator and head on up and they're waiting for you and they're ready for you or whatever. And these people, then they run into that and it's just like, oh, they're already having hard times that they're looking for a job. And now you're <laughs> See, that's another th- reason it wouldn't fly here. I think there would be a lawsuit on every single one of those people. And, you know, some scumbag lawyer would be like, oh, yeah, we can sue this TV production company. You gain the legal rights to that little girl. <laughs> Anyhow, to make a long story short, I did not encounter anything supernatural. However, I had over 200 pictures and there are so many pictures with balls of light in them, with orbs and that things that I didn't see on the day. But you could see when once you had taken the photograph or, you know, once you blew it up on the, you know, the the, the, case, once, the computer. Once you blew it up with a projector and examined it with a magnifying glass. <laughs> said, there's something, there's something in here. This means something. This statue of mashed potatoes I made. And yes, it's something that you said in an earlier episode of the show is that our minds are hardwired to find patterns in things. And you can see Jesus in a tortilla or in a back guano splotch on a cave wall because we're trying to make patterns. We're trying to make recognizable symbols from things that we see. And yeah, there would be shadows or there would be light reflections or, you know, just stuff from the flash that if you squint hard enough, you're just like, well, that doesn't that kind of look like a face? Doesn't that kind of, you know, kind of thing? But but there was never a single thing where it's just like, oh, well, that is obviously an old woman sitting in a rocking chair, you know, with a Confederate flag for some reason. You know, the, the, it was always, eh, this kind of looks like a shape, you know, thing. There was, I, I, and I, I posted some of those pictures in my blog. I mean, certainly not all of the pictures because what a waste of time that would have been. <laughs> he posted all 200 And then said, anyone who needs a magnifying glass, just send me your address and I'll mail you mine. But that was something that the man said that the guide said was, you know, make sure that you look at all of your pictures because you might not see something until you study it in detail. And, you know, all of these pictures that we've shown in the slideshow are photographs that people have taken on this tour. So if you have a picture, you know, where you can see something or you email it to me and we'll use it in the next year's thing and so yeah maybe you look in the corner and sure enough there's something that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise but i i didn't see any of that stuff but the the truth is like i said in when i was turning on the light had i actually seen something had i actually encountered some otherworldly force it would not have made a cool story it would have been too upsetting for me it would have been too jarring you know there, there are things that man was not meant to know or the man's mind is not prepared for kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I'm fine to say I sort of believe in ghosts. I don't really. But to actually be like, damn it, I believe in ghosts. I, and here's why. Uh, I, I'm just not. I'm not the guy for that. <laughs> You're glad that you can't say that. And people will talk about these kind of things on interviews or, you know, those Halloween stories shows or, you know, ghost hunters and all that stuff. The things that they've seen. And all that, and I, I know myself. Ha- if I saw any of that stuff, I would be messed up for life. You know, it's like somebody that has bad seafood or bad sushi once, and they can never have sushi again. That's that's what it would be like. You know, somebody that has that sees something, that has some kind of brush with something that could be there, couldn't be there, or whatever. But from that point on, they never want to go near any of that stuff again. Yeah. I'll never watch a, a scary movie again. I'll never read a scary book. I, I don't celebrate halloween anymore that kind of thing it's like my wife who uh had a had a burrito on the day that she was sick and then she wound up throwing that burrito up and would never go back to that place and eat a burrito again no and that's (laughs) me with m&ms i i I have a chocolate aversion because of a bad m&ms experience and and so yes an m&m killed my dad (laughs) but i uh, it was crispy (laughs) that did it yeah luckily thank goodness they stopped that because those were deadly (laughs) <laughs> Anyhow, do you want to add anything or should we call that in? I, like I said, I, I unfortunately don't have anything to add to it. Uh, my uh, 
biggest experience with ghosts is having booberry on Halloween. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have oh, a history. All right, well, that's that's fine. We'll end on that note. Uh, thank you for listening to another episode of That Gets My Thirteen Nights of Halloween. Goat on the goat, Steve. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, tip your waitresses and and donate to the show while you're at it, because uh, yeah, we're trying to raise money to uh, keep the show going, to replace the aging computer that is on its last legs and is going to die soon, and come back as a ghost Mac. <laughs> so yes, please uh, donate. These shows are early incentive episodes. They are. And I, I, again, on the, we have forums over at doonsteef.blogspot.com. No, doonsteef.forum.org, right? That's right. Doonsteef.forum. Free, free forums. Uh, Just go to the blog and click on the link. It's over at journeyinto.podcast. <laughs> if you have had ex- an experience, of a, you know, a ghostly kind of experience, by all means, share it in the forums. I think it would be really cool a year from now to say, oh, okay, do you remember last year when we talked about ghosts? We've had a bunch of listeners that have had really f up experience. One of our listeners' children was fathered by a ghost. And let me read this uh, you know, from the forums. I, that would be really neat. So if you have something like that, go ahead and, uh, and share it. Yeah. Thanks a lot, folks. And we'll uh, see you next time. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. We're ready to believe you. Are you ready? Are you ready for a good time? That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is.